بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه. First of all, apologies if I was for the delay in starting today's class. We were expecting to start at 6:30 KSA time, so it's running a little bit behind schedule here. Apologies for that, Sean. So we, were, we got to the place where Sheikh Al Uthaymeen, Ibn Al Uthaymeen Rahmatullah, was speaking and about the explanation of some of the Huruf al Jaf or Huruf al Khaf. Um, question is why was the Sheikh speaking about the Huruf al Khaf? Anybody? Why is the Sheikh explaining Huruf al Khaf? Correct, because yes, now we want to be again. Because as we remember, inshallah, the Sheikh is um, beginning of the book, Ibn al Ajr Rum speaks about the, the three different aspects of the Arabic language namely, ismun, wa fi'lun, wa harf. And then he speaks about how each of these three aspects of the language is recognized. He says that. The, uh, the ism, the noun, is recognized by one of four things. Either it is khaf or jar, it has a kasra on the end of it. Uh, either um, it has a tanween, two dhammas, two kasra, or two, two fathas. Either it has alif al lam entered upon it. Or it has one of the huruf al khaf entering upon it, and as Ibn al Ajaru mentioned, a number of them altogether. Altogether, he mentioned 12, including the three uh, huruf al qasam. So, getting to the place where we uh, left off, which was just at the end of. Page 24, the beginning of page 25, where the Sheikh began to speak about. Or, or did we finish the, uh, this, Brother Muhammad? Al Ba' wal Kaf wal Lam. Do we speak about uh, the difference why he's referring to it as Al Ba' and not Bi and Ki? And we did that in Alhamdulillah. So it was the next letter. Uh, it was actually explaining. It was therefore explaining um, thereafter, after having explained, Sheikh, after having explained that al ba al kaf al lam, the three, uh, the three letters or the three huruf al jar, which are. Uh, pronounced by the name of the letter and not by the sound that they produce. Sheikh said because for my pointer, Sheikh says because the Nahuyin al Ma'ruf and the Nahuyin and the Kalima in a talent and a la harfin wahidin yunta kubismiha. A word, if it was made up. A word, a kalima, if it was made up of one letter, then it's the name of the letter that is pronounced, that is, that is used, rather than the sound. This is Ma'ruf and the Nahuyin, well known amongst the grammarians. So, and if it was made up of, if the word was made up of uh, harfain, two letters or more, then it's the word 
the sound produced by those two letters put together. So, for example, we say min. Because of mim and mim coming together, we say min is harfu jar. We don't say al mimu wa nunu harfu jar. Okay. Um, Sheikh said, li zaydin. Li zaydin. We say the lamb is harfu jar. We don't say li is harfu jar. So the first of these three letters, al ba u wal ka u wal la, the first of them being al ba. Sheikh gives an example. He said al ba min alamat al ism. It is from the from the al ba is from the signs of an ism. So when you find a word that has al ba. Is there a problem? Uh, and we started, I think, uh, Is there anybody else that has the same problem of hearing? Can, you, can brothers just make a quick note, please, in the comments? If you can hear me fine, type 1. Can't hear me. I think you won't respond. Can't hear me. 1-1, please, so hell. And Mossum can hear me. I'll maybe leave and come back. Okay. That's fine. It seems like he has a, a, a there's a problem with the sound for for Nihal Adil. He's left, inshallah. Hopefully, he log back in and it should be resolved hopefully. So Al Ba is from the signs of Al Ism. So if you find a word, the Sheikh says, "Ida wajat kalimatan, kalimatan." أو إذ نعم دخلت عليها الباء فهي اسم. If you find a word that has a harf al ba entering upon it, then that word is an ism. For example, بسم الله. Okay, uh, ism. This is an ism. The word ism is in itself a noun. Uh, why, brothers? Because, because, ism is a noun, because, come on brothers please, okay inshallah, why is ism a noun, now because there is a letter ba in front of the jar came before it, and from the, uh, and ba is from the huruf of jar, and anything else that you can see here as a sign, Exactly, uh, because of the khaf. There is khaf. Another example the Sheikh gives the ayah in the Quran. In Surah Al Zumar, ayah 37. Alaysa Allahu bi azizin din tiqan. Alaysa Allahu bi azizin. Bi azizin. Here you have your heart for jar. So Azizin said this is ism because harful khaf which is the bar enters upon it and also it has tanween as well as the tanween itself being khaf or a kind of jar kasra and therefore there are three signs in this word showing that this is a man. What's the meaning of al ba? Sheikh says al ba ta'ti lis sababiya al ba ta'ti lis sababiya so one of the reasons one of the meanings of ba and the Sheikh says wallaha ma'anin kathiratun and it has many meanings one of them is that it is a cause it shows the cause of something and it shows uh, how something happened yet what um, that it was caused, what something was caused by. And from all the, also, and from the meanings of it also is al isti'ana, seeking help or aid. Okay? So, for example, example of isti'ana, katabtu bil kalami, katabtu bil kalami. 
um, meaning I wrote with the aid of isti'anat al-qalam, with the aid of a pen. The Sheikh says every ba, kullu ba in dadkhulu ala adawat al-amal, every ba which is found um, before a word which, the meaning of which is a tool, a tool that is used to perform a task, like for example a qalam, whatever else it might be, a screwdriver or a hammer or any tool, فَهِيَ بَاءَ الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ And that ba has the meaning of الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ For example, ضَرَبْتُ بِالْعَصَى ضَرَبْتُ I hit, I struck with a stick. Meaning, with the aid of الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ and there are many, and there are some other meanings. The Sheikh says, "Wata'ati li ukhra." And the next one, al-kaf. Al-kaf aydan min huruf al-kaf. He said, "Kaf." Al-kaf is also from the letters, from the particles that give uh, kaf or jar. For example, "Ulanun kal bahri karaman." Ulanun so and so ka as your harf jar. Al-Bahri, Kal-Bahri, Karaman. So-and-so is like the, the sea in generosity. Karaman in generosity. Kal-Bahri. Sheikh says over here, وَمَعْنَا الْكَاف التشبيه The meaning of kaf is Drawing comparison or drawing similitudes, drawing similitudes and comparisons. So, Fulanun Kal Bahri, so and so is like the sea in his generosity, in his abundance. Kal Bahri, Yakul, we say, Al Bahri, Ismun. Why is it Ism, brothers? Good. Alif al lam is one. Thank you, Zahir. Naam also has kaf. And well done, Mohsin. Harfu jar kaf. Enter the poet. So, the Sheikh says, لو قال قائل, if somebody was to say, Ulanun kal bahru is marfu' with a rafa' with a dhamma at the end. This is wrong. Because the kaf is a harf kaf. The letter which brings Qasr at the end. يَجِبُ أَنْ يُخْفِبَ مَا بَعْدَهُ It must. That the word after it is given a Qasr. So that you, um, that you give a Qasr to the word that comes after it. أَوْ إِذَا قَالَتْ فُلَانٌ كَالْبَحْرَ So and so is like See, but he puts a fatta on the ra in nasb. We said before that this terminology is used for a fatta is mansub, or a dhamma is marfu'. This is a terminology that you're going to start hearing more and more of. Rather than saying dhamma at the end of a word, we say marfu'. Rather than saying fatha at the end of a word, we say mansub. Also, raf or nasb. And if you see a kasra, it's called majroor or makhfoor, both of them being the same, meaning having kasra. The Sheikh said this is wrong because uh, of the harf al jar, so indeed we say, Ulanun shal bahri karaman al jar. And Ulanun is also a ism because of the tanween. Karaman is also ism because brothers, why? Because of the tanween as well. Okay, and the lamb. This is down. 
السلام أيضا من حروف الخط إذا دخلت على اسم حفظته ولا تدخل إلا على الأسماء لام is also one of those letters which is a حرف الخط and it is uh, and it is only and it only enters upon أسماء nouns Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ فَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ And indeed he is strong or severe in loving good man. So man is, is, is intense in his love of, of al-khayr, meaning the dunya. Number one. Uh, 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 Islam enters upon the word Hub. Hub is ism because it has some signs and the signs of the ism. And what are they, my brothers? One of them is Al. Are you sure? I can't see Al. I said I can't see Al in this word. Not Al, right? The Lam is there, Harpa Jal is there, and the Harpa uh, Lukhaf is there. Also, Sorry, the Kasra. Kasra is there. That's right. Correct. Say, Sahih is on the Abu. Nihal beat you to it. What I'm going to say. Lehubbil Khairi. Al Khairi is also Isim. Because of the Alif and Nam and because of the Kasra. If you studied Book 1, Medina Book 1, you should know that. This kasra is there for a reason. Kasras don't only come about because of harful kasra, harful jal. They also come about for other reasons. If you study book one, Medina book one, you should know this kasra, why it's there. Brothers can tell us, inshallah. It has a side benefit. We have a Almost, almost Mosin, Muhammad Mosin, almost there. Now it's Mudaf Ilayhi. And Mudaf is Hub. And Mudaf Ilayhi, the word which has been joined onto or annexed onto Hub is Al Khairi. It's Mudaf Ilayhi. That's why it has a, that's why it's been Makhfoud. That's why it has a custom. الخير اسم في هذه العلامات العلامتان الخفض ودخول ألف اللام لا شديد لا شديد سبحان الله. so surprisingly this word it may look to the novice like it has this lam before it and this is how for just somebody might say so if it's helpful to then obviously we should have kasra at the end of the words. So because there's no kasra, we know that this is not helpful to So this is a noun, but not because there's a helpful judge before it. Why is it a noun? Lashadirun. Sorry. Sorry, Abid, we didn't touch on the issue of Mudaf and Mudaf and Alayhi. As a side benefit, I was just asking the brothers that studied Medina Book 1. It comes in quite early, like Lesson 5. It's a good book to study, inshallah. A uh, good series. It'll give you some uh, grounding. And I would prefer that the brothers at least study Medina Book 1 before taking this lesson. If they don't, uh, unless they are already 
speaking Arabic. And if they already speak Arabic, they understand Arabic and can read Arabic, that's fine. Otherwise, maybe the book one is a better start. Uh, now, so this is not al job. This is Lam al Ta'kid, or Tawkid, meaning Lam which gives emphasis. Okay? Uh, also known as uh, Lam al Zahlaqa, the Lam which slips away from the beginning of the sentence to, to uh, the beginning of the noun because of Inna. Anyway, let's not go into detail there. La, not al job. Shadidun, it's a noun because of the Tanween. Oh, no, I'm up one. The Sheikh says, وَلَكِنَ اللَّامُ هُنَا لِلْتَوْكِيدِ وَلَيْسَتْ حَرْفُ جَابِ And the Lam, تَأْتِلِ مِعَانٍ It comes, the Lam has a number of meanings. Amongst them is التَّمْلِيكِ Ownership. For example, وَلَكُمْ نِسْفُ مَا تَرَكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ and to you belongs half of what your wives leave behind. Ayah in Surah Al-Nisa. وَلَكُمْ نِسْفُ مَا تَرَكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ Can anyone complete the ayah? Even if it had, even if it was just a meaning, but the actual ayah itself. Anyone? MashaAllah. <laughs> Even though it's preferable not to write the transliteration of the Quran, uh, uh, you have to you belongs half of your wives' wealth if they did not leave behind children. And if they if they had children left behind, then you have a quarter of what they leave uh, of their wealth. Okay, so the word, the letter here, Lam, Lakum, this Lam is Lam, at Tamlik, or Lam al Mulk, Lam of ownership, and it is Harful Jaz. Okay? Mulkun Lakum. Um, what I call Al Malu Lizaydin. You also say Al Malu Lizaydin. The money belongs to, the wealth belongs to Zaydin. Okay, uh, there may be some confusion here. Check out the example of this ayah. Walakum, Nispuma, Tadaka, Azwajukum. Nowhere over here do we find the signs of Khaf. Uh, uh, Kasra, Tanween. So, what are you going to say about this? Kum. Wala kum. Can someone tell me about kum? Tell me what, anything you know about kum. Anything you know about kum. Okay, that's the meaning. Okay, the meaning is that all to you all. Okay, fine. Second, second person, yeah. Anything else, brothers? Um, ownership. Well, ownership, we know that from the lam, not from the actual kum. Yeah, to you all, if there was male and female mixed together, then you would say kum. If it was only female, then you would say kunna. No, not the issue of Mufid, of Israel. It's called a Bamir. Noun, pronoun, Mosin. It's called a Bamir. Alright? And it's plural, Sahih. Okay. This Bamir, Kum, refers to you all. Meaning, uh, that is referring to the men, your wives, the wealth your wives leave behind, half of the, the, the wealth your wives leave behind. Belongs to whom? Belongs to you all. Belongs to you, meaning the husband. If they have no, if they have no offspring. Okay. So, what else can you tell me now that we've covered so many different aspects of this word "kum"? One thing remains that nobody has mentioned so far.
Five seconds. So answer. Four, three, two. How big? I'm asking. No, my God, the meter attached. No, my God, possessive. No, that's not what I'm looking at. Okay, yes, it is attached. It's not the meter possessive. So he, what can you tell me? Something nobody has mentioned so far, which is the whole reason why we are here studying it, talking about it. <laughs> no, not the love. Yes, Muslim. Absolutely. So, hey, it's an ism. The mir, this the mir is, is an ism. So, uh, the the mir had lam al mulk enter upon it. So now, because the the mir enters upon it, you know that this the mir is an ism. Not every the mir, not every the mir can have a lam enter upon it. Okay, like for example, anta. You don't say how the anta. You say how the laka. Belongs to you. The calf is the mir, and therefore it's ism. So, despite the fact that not every the mir has a lam uh, jab enter upon it, the grammarians say all of the bama in all of the the mirs pronounce kulha asma. They are all asma. Why? Because some of them allow. Had for judge and to upon them. Okay, and that is something that you find declared in the beginning of book three, if I'm not mistaken, in the Medina series. Beginning of book three declares Kullu al as kull al damair asma. Okay, hence I said it's better to have studied book one before coming to this book, this uh, because there are some intricacies and some details mentioned here. Which a person only grasps after getting the foundations late. The foundations, I would say, definitely are book one and book two, even better, mashallah. Okay. Then the Sheikh moves on to Huruf al Qasim. We try to complete them today, inshallah. The Sheikh says, Huruf al Qasim, Ida wajatta kalimatan dakhala alayha, Huruf al Qasimi, Fahia ismun. We find a word that has any of the huruf al qasim enter upon them, enter upon it, and it is an ism because the huruf al qasim, or huruf al qasim, tajru aidan, because the huruf al qasim also they give a kasra at the end of the next word. Fahiyah min huruf al khaf, because they are from the letters of particles of khaf, and they are al waw, al ba, al ta. Allah Taala says in the Quran about the using the waw. والفجر وليال عشر الله سويس باي الفجر and also by the ten nights so الفجر الفجر is an ism how do we know brothers because because Because, 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 because of the wall. Now, harful jar, which is harful qasim, and also, absolutely alif and lam, and finally the khaf. Naam. And how about layali? Tanween. Naam. The wall, harful qasim, and also the khaf. All done. And we mean half, and this one is one. Ashrin, ism or not ism? Ism. How do we know? Then we mean and half. Ahsante. Well done. Okay. So the Sheikh says, ismun al Fajr ismun, because he entered upon it with the letter of Qasim. Because the letter of Qasim came upon it, article of Qasim. وفيه علامات ثانية علامة ثانية الألف واللام وفيها الثالثة الثالث صين الخف. الدام والباء قال الله تعالى وأقسموا بالله جهد إيمانهم وأقسموا بالله جهد إيمانهم لئن جاءتهم آية بيؤمنون بها and they swear by their strongest oaths. By Allah, 
if there came to them a sign, they would surely believe in it. وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ The ba over here, the Sheikh says, al ba'u huna harfu qasmin. Wa Allah, lafzul jalala, ismun. And also, it has other signs. Wa fihi min alamat al-asma'i tukhulu harfu al-qasmi alayhi wa al-khaf wa al-alif al-lam. Al-khaf wa al-alif al-lam. As for ta, قال الله تعالى وتالله لا أكيدن أصنامكم سورة الأنبياء وتالله لا أكيدن أصنامكم وتالله this is a قسم Sheikh says, Allahi, Lafzul Jalala here, is ism, li'anna fihi min alamat al-ismi, because from the signs of ism is the khul harf al-qasm. Harf al-qasm over here being the, being the, what one? Which harf al-qasm came in this ayah? Na'am Muhsin. No. They're trying. It's actually the ta. The ta. Okay. Uh, I think commonly these days we use uh, the T if you want, when, it, when you do transliterating uh, Arabic. Normally we say T for uh, rather than T H. Uh, and T H conventionally is used for ta. No muhsin. The wow over here is not a harf al-qasm, but it's the ta that came after it. Tallahi. And if you go back a couple of lines, you will see again that Shaykh Taymin mentioned, the author mentioned, al wow, wal ba, wa ta. These are harf al-qasm. These are harf al-qasm. Wow, wal fajri. Ba, billahi. Ta, tallahi. You've seen all those three in the ayat, the Quran. We have Surah Al Fajr, also Surah Al An'am, ayah 109, also Surah Al Anbiya, ayah 58. Trying to uh, finish off now because we've come to the end of the time. I just want to finish this very the, the few lines over here at the end of this section. So we can start uh, with the well, next time, inshallah. So, the Sheikh says, Naam. So, Allahi ismun, Lafzul Jalala is ism, because it has Harful uh, Qasim, which is Ta, also has Alif al Lam, and also is Mahfoud. Now, I don't know that there's any difference between them, Nihal. They're all available, and Allah knows best of their order of strength. Um, if we add these three particles of qasm to the nine uh, of khaf altogether, together, صار الجميع إثني عشر حرفا كلها تخفض. We find that there are twelve letters, all of them give qasm. Okay, and this list again mentioned before is not exhaustive, but this is what Ibn Ajr Rum wanted to give us. Sheikh Ibn Taymiyyah is also happy. For the, for as beginners, to give us these twelve and not to speak to us about other letters, so no need to to you know to be uh, questioning why. Okay, al ba'u zakraha al mu'allifu rahimahu Allah fi huruf al qafdi wa fi huruf al qasm, fahiya idan takunu musharika tun bain huruf al qafdi wa huruf al qasm. The Sheikh says, I'm just trying to speak up to finish this section quickly, insha Allah. Um, as I'm conscious of the time. Uh, the author, Al Mu'allif, mentioned Al Ba as from, the, from amongst the Huruf Al Qab and also from, the, from amongst the Huruf Al Qasm. So therefore, Ba is Mushtarika, it is it shares. 
between being harf al khaf and also between being roof al qasam. So it can be used for isti'ana, it can be used for sabab, for a reason, for the cause of something, and it can also be used as a qasam, depending on the context, depending on the use of the person. Intaha al kalam and al ism. Now we have come to the end of, of speaking about the ism. So we know the Sheikh says, Al ism yu'arafu bi arba ilamat. The noun is known by four signs. Al khafu, wa tanwinu, wa dakhul al fulam, wa huruf al khaf. Yani, anna kulla kalimatin tajidu fiha wahidatan min hadihi al alamat, fahya ismun. Meaning that every word that you find, one of these four signs is uh, is, an, is, a, is a noun, is an ism. وَرُبَّمَا يَجْتَمِعُ فِيهَا عَلَامَتَانِ And it's quite possible that you're going to have two signs coming together in one word. وَرُبَّمَا يَجْتَمِعُ فِيهَا ثَلَاثَ عَلَامَتَانِ And it's quite possible that you have three signs coming together in one word. وَلَا يَجْتَمِعُ فِيهَا أَرْبَعُ عَلَامَتٍ Why not? And you will not have four signs coming together, four four in one word. Why not, brothers? Because... Now, because Alif and Lam and Tanween do not come together. The Al and the Tanween cannot come together. Jazakallah khala. Sheikh says, لِأَنَّ التَّنْوِينَ وَالْأَلِفُ وَالْلَّامِ لَا يَجْتَمِعَانِ They do not uh, come together. Wallahu ta'ala. Okay, my brothers, we come to the end of the, the session, inshallah, and the end of the section as well. There are some questions that Ibn Al-Fahim mentioned. Hopefully I'll prepare some of these questions for you, inshallah ta'ala, and send it uh, um, out for homework. And inshallah, just as a point of revision, just to keep your mind active, inshallah, before the next class. And the next class, we in the, we take it from the beginning of Alamatul Af'ali, on page 29, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa alihi. Okay, brother, so I'm just going to say, brothers, for your patience. And again, uh, apologies for the late start. And that may have disturbed some people's schedules. And sadly, I think the baby one not able to follow because some brothers had to leave its use. So, inshallah, they'll benefit from the recording. Okay guys, assalamu alaikum wa